the speed. It's a 90-something overall player. It's going to be a force. And here we go, semifinal. Number two is underway. Who's going to face I'm Wild in the Ooh, final? And he's, he's got room! With it. And Scarpness works it out to the 42-yard line. Let's take a look at your scouting report, RG, for both of these guys in this one here in semifinal number two. So for a Rosie, you need to be able to stop the run. He said, when I play a competitive Madden and I can stop the run, I'm almost unbeatable. My Achilles heel is being able to stop that run. We'll see if he can do that. And for Scott, you need to play red zone defense. Arozzi said, I have no problem getting into the red zone, but once I get into the red zone, it's hard to put up those touchdowns. Scott says he plays fantastic red zone defense, so he needs to capitalize in those situations and not to let Arozzi get touchdowns once he gets to that red zone. Hands it off to Telvin Coleman, the speedster from the Atlanta Falcons. Former Indiana Hoosier goes nowhere. Joel Scottness. With a last name like Scottness, you don't even need a Madden nickname. We just call you Scott. Second and 13 from the 39. Opening drive. He's not going to have enough time. And there is Hill coming in for the sack. Both players running that West Coast offense. And you're going to see them both running this gun bunch formation. It's the most popular formation in competitive Madden. It's what our champion Mike Skimbo likes to run. You're going to see a heavy dose of that from both competitors. Oh, here's the playbooks. West Coast offense for Scarpness. Third and 22. Got to watch a deep out route by Mike Wallace. Got to get the playoff here on third and forever. And Aaron Rodgers will get sacked. It's going to be a fourth and forever. And it's a Rosie in that Colts playbook, which is a 3-4 formation. Yeah, that's a big way to come out in this game with a Rosie. That 3-4 uh, defense coming up big for him you know, we early did, on. We did a social poll out on the Twittersphere, and the fans out there thought it was going to be a Rosie and I'm wild in the finals. Strong start for a Rosie. Yeah, and a Rosie, he is a lifelong Jags fan. He says his family has always had season tickets. He usually goes to five to six Jaguars games a year, but due to school, he hasn't been able to go to one this year. But guess what? No matter what happens here today, he's excited about going to that Jag Seahawks game right after this. I can't remember the last time I was down here. I think 1989 Gator Bowl or something like that. It's, it's been a while. Been a while since I've been in Jacksonville, Florida, and we've had a good time. Here comes P.A. Post. This is a really popular play. Tight end's going to leak. He's got Robert Griffin. He's got some wheels. The arm can be questionable at times, and this time he just throws it away, and it'll be second and ten. And I'm glad that he threw that ball away. He also runs the West Coast offense. A lot of people that play Madden, not competitively, always force passes. What you're going to see from these best players, if it's not there, they'll click in that right stick, the quarterback will throw the ball away, and they'll live to fight another down. There's T.Y. Hilton to the 37. Take a look at the defensive playbook for Scarpness. He's running that. Hybrid New England defense, so you got a 3-4 and a 4-3 in there to go along with the 3-3-5 odd. Yeah, the 3-3-5 odd was the formation that Scarp said he liked the most out of that defense. It's what he's in right now. It's what Skimbo runs. Really popular defense in the community right now. you got to watch out for these blitzing linebackers. They're usually on a cross blitz. It's time they drop into coverage. Checks it down to Ryan Shazier, and that's the magic of Ultimate Team. We've seen Miles Jack is tied in today. This time it's Ryan Shazier who breaks free for nine. Big first down now in field goal range with Janikowski, the lefty, is his kicker. And there is Andre Reed to the 21. He's almost become the meta. You almost got to have an Andre Reed on your team. Yeah, we've seen Andre Reed at the Buffalo event. We've seen yep. him in two lineups here. Popular mud item right there. Got some sure hands, second and three. Got to watch these crossing routes. This receiver is going to run that C route. You're going to have this receiver running another cross. Griffin has time. He's going to use his wheels this time to the 16-yard line. He's in the red zone. 
And I'll tell you, that's a lot to account for right there, Coltrane. You got two receivers crossing the field with each other. You got the wide receiver on the outside running a corner route that is very hard to guard one-on-one. Plus, you got to deal with RG3 scrambling ability. That is going to be a headache for Scott to go ahead and lock up. Ball at the 16 now, hands it off to Gurley. And TG2, former Bulldog, takes it to the 11. Got some folks up there in the nose, uh, nosebleeds. I see you up there watching the little Madden football today. <laughs> That's where I'd be hanging out. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a last row guy. Second and five. Scrambling. And Shazier possession catches it at the eight. It's not going to be enough. Here comes a third and short. Big play right here by Scott. You need to force Arosi into an awkward situation where he either needs to go for it on fourth down or kick the field goal. You need to hold the door right here. You got to protect that line. And he'll hand it to Gurley. And he'll get to the seven yard line. Fourth and one. Arosi's got a decision to make and he's going to kick it. That's a big stop right there for Scott. Way to get some momentum back right there if you're scarting this. You, got, you know, you have to punt the ball on your first possession. A Rosie walks down the field like he said he would. And then Scarp sticking true to the key to the game, getting stingy in the red zone, holding a Rosie to three. Of course, we got Josh Scobie going to join us for the final. Is he going to jump in the booth here? When are we going to get a Scobie legend card? You work at EA. Come on now. We got to ask him. Yeah. I'm down, well, with a Sco- put, I'm down with a Scobie legend. Let's put him on the spot. But Janikowski kicks it through. It's a three-point game now. Ball at the 25. Take a look at the play selection here. Skarpness went to the air. Three of his four plays ended up in negative yards. And goes to the run this time. Tevin Coleman gets to the edge. But can't make Ed Reed miss from the U. Well, that Tevin Coleman is a salary cap monster. And Skarp said he originally wasn't in his lineup. Said last minute that was a switch he put in, and he expects big things from Tevin Coleman. Look at that. They got the, they got the foot warmers there. Trying to keep those hands loose. Of course, those folks in the Northeast are, all, are making fun of us right now because they're like, it's 47 degrees. That's golf weather. I'm out here. the beach. I'm out here with the scully gloves, <laughs> a scarf. Gosh forbid anybody from back home in Boston sees it. They're going to give me a hard time. You've gone soft in your Orlando ways. Big play right here for Scott. 25-year-old. Goes to school at Florida State College of Jacksonville. Majors in nutrition. And it's fitting that he majors in nutrition because right after dinner last night, he went straight to the gym. (laughs) He wasn't messing around. I went to the gym once. That was like 1996, I believe. It was a good day. Yeah, yeah. No, Scott was not messing around at all. He got out of dinner. He said, man, I got to go work out. I mean, this is impressive. A guy, a guy that's able to go to school full-time, qualify for these works events, full-time. and works, you know, 30, 40 hours a week, that's off the scopness. Third and one after the timeout. Tevin Coleman. Oh! Pitch. Can't get there. It's going to be close. That was a fourth and one. That was a big user tackle by a Rosie. He was on that defender himself, manually pursued the running back, makes the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. We got ourselves a fourth and one. This is going to be a big play once we start the second quarter because they're going to take it there. So through the first five minutes, we got a 3 nothing game here in Jacksonville. Which one of these local Madden players is going to get the chance to play I'm Wild in the finals? We will see. Everybody watching. Skarpness says at home he's got his mom Marion watching his older brothers in attendance Wesley here cheering him on Let's see if he can come through for him right now on this big fourth and one You only get about five possessions in Madden. That's why he's going for it Trailing by a field goal only being down three is good too because he can hold them to three if he doesn't get it It'd still be one possession it throws it in the And boy that should have been picked off and a Rosie doing the Dikembe Mutombo finger after he gets the stop. Look at him with Shazier. Starts, sees the crossing route, comes back down. Use the defense. Big play right there by a Rosie. He's got all kinds of momentum. Well, he's upset he doesn't get the pick that he should have had, but he does get possession. Turnover on downs, and he goes to, to Andre Reed at the 27-yard line, second and three. 
And he said he was going to slang this rock all over the field. That's what he's doing so far. Scarton is going to have to make a play. Not let him in for a touchdown right here. That's the important thing. You need to keep this one possession, and I don't think he will. And Gurley will be stopped at the one-yard line. First and goal. Wow. Hanging out here at Daly's Place here in Jacksonville in the shadows of Everbank Field. Here in semifinal number two. And it'll be an easy quarterback sneak for a touchdown. Now Connor Dunn, a.k.a. a Rosie, about the, he's up now two possessions. Like we said, he goes to school full time at Villanova. He's a junior majoring in economics. Wants to get into business marketing, sports media. Volunteers with the Villanova basketball team. Member of the Ocean Gang Madden crew. They're all at home watching. Shout out to them. Says he's got his mom, Monica, back home watching. Dad, George. His little cousin, Christopher, as well. And he... Take a look again, RG. It's Todd Gurley from the Rams. Look at him just following those blocks. Good stick work right there. Way to get it done for a Rosie. And look at the emotion. He's feeling it. Trying to represent the Jaguars at the Pro Bowl. A prize pool of $1.15 million this year in Madden 18. And it's funny you say trying to represent the Jaguars. One thing a Rosie told me is the Jaguars had a live event last year. And when he saw somebody else win the Jaguars club event, he said, oh, heck no. This is my city. That's my team. I need to go out and do that. Set himself up for a goal to come here and accomplish it. And he's just, what, three quarters and a, seven quarters away from accomplishing that dream. And by the way, RG, we're live around the stadium, inside the stadium, outside the stadium. We're down here at the Daly's Place Amphitheater. Come down and see us. We got some giveaways. We got Josh Scobie coming by, autograph stuff. Of course, we're, we're, moment, we're just a few hours away from kickoff from the Seahawks and the Jags. It's going to be a crazy game. That's got to be the biggest yeah. game this weekend. It's, it's, here in Jacksonville, it's always been like a college atmosphere. You know, the fans just absolutely get behind their team. Through the good times and the bad, and they've had a lot of good times this season. Second and nine. Wow. Got a text from my buddy Maurice Jones Drew. Couldn't be here today. But he's like, he's like, I'm super jealous you're out in Duval hanging out yeah, like with the Jags. Shout he's, out to MJD. Huge Madden fan. Great oh, guy. Yeah, Great personality. Legend. Third and seven. And there is Mike wow. Wallace to the 25 yard line. Oh, and, and by the way, I did dress up like Maurice Jones Drew for Halloween one time. That's his real jersey that he wore in the game. Of course, he's a little guy. Look at that! Look at that belly! <laughs> look at that belly in that jersey. I had the belly on full that day. A couple racks of ribs. We had a lot of fun that day. And Tevin oh. Coleman will work to the thirteen. And Rosie says he needs to stop the run if he wants to be successful, but Coleman is starting to get busy here. Missed the tackle right there by Rosie. Allowed the lane to open up. Scarton is trying to get himself back in the ball game. Look at him chewing some gum. Dead serious. Ball at the 13, trailing by 10 is Scarpness. Lives less than five miles away from the stadium. Needs a touchdown here. Rodgers hands it off to Coleman. Spins away. Still, still on up. Feet. It's going to be close to the first down as we hit the two-minute warning, second and one. That was like slow motion <laughs> broken tackles from Tevin Coleman. And he doesn't really do anything slow. And I like this formation right here by Scott. This is a single back ace formation. It's balanced on both sides of the ball. It's really hard to tell where the run's going. Two tight ends, does use a little motion. Stretches it to the outside. Coleman cuts it back. That should be enough for a new set of downs. It'll be first and goal from the three. He's been, looks like he's going to stay in this ace formation. 
And with those balanced formations, Scott, it's hard to commit. No, you know, there's no strong side, so it's hard to commit on which way the run's going to go. He ran the ball the side of the motion the last play. Let's see if he does that again. Yeah, maybe stretch it out. So maybe the it's this side, side this time. Sides go up the middle. Try to cut it back, but Jadavion Clowney was there with a hit. Not a bad player to have on your D-line right hey, there, hey, huh? I'm a Clemson grad. I don't want to talk about anybody from the South Carolina Gamecocks, but he is a beast. He's an absolute freak. Of course, he's on the Texans now, so I can get behind that a little bit, I guess. And there is Tevin wow. Coleman, the speedster. Goes in for six, and Scarpness needed that one. Oh, boy, did he. But he's getting that Tevin Coleman going, or Rosie having, showing some vulnerability like he talked about. He has trouble stopping that run sometimes, and now he has a minute, 28 seconds, where a Rosie needs to protect this ball. If you give Scarp the ball back with those two timeouts that he has in enough time, he could easily tie this game up going into halftime. This is going to be a big sequence of a possession right here. Yeah, Rosie gets the ball. To start the second half. Ooh. Boy, it looked like he could have could have maybe got some more yardage on that. Tiptoes out of bounds. Take a look at this run again. Coleman with a burst of speed to the outside. Yeah, and look at him just getting outside to the numbers. Out runs the user defender. Good play call. That's a big relief right there for Scott. Take a look at the play selection here. Both these guys pretty balanced. And a good gain there on first down. Second and one now for a Rosie. Mentioned before, he will receive the ball to start half number two. What a quick hike. Looking downfield, nothing there. Nothing there, though. He's going to take off with RG3. Good stick. And let's clarify for the folks that are here watching. This is a flashback RG3. This is, this is a while back. Yeah, this RG. It's a Thursday night football edition when he balled out on a Thursday night. So they capture that, those stats from those days. This is this is not the current RG3 model. Yeah, he's a 93 overall on a 99 scale. And we talked about a 750 salary cap. Out of that cap, RG3 takes 51 of that cap. So yeah. a big percentage of your team goes to having that mobile quarterback with those geeked up stats. And he's got a lot of speed. Sort of like the right-handed Michael Vick. Good read. Second and three. T.Y. Hilton. Ooh! And a Rosie! And he dives in and swags! Touch down a Rosie, and he'll have a chance to go up 10, pinning this extra point. Oh, my goodness. A Rosie getting the crowd buzzing with phenomenal stick work. The spin avoids the tackle, dives into the end zone, makes it two possessions. All types of momentum for Mr. Dunn. Quick score, so 33 seconds left in the half. Both teams with two timeouts. Dang, he looks focused right there too, Scott. Look at that. Look at the intensity of that young man right there. Set out to accomplish a goal, and you could start feeling that goal getting closer and closer. And Woodson will take it to the 30-yard line. Take a look at this again. Getting sticky with it. Oh, right here, first great read. Cuts inside, three defenders, no big deal. Spin to the outside, bad missed tackle right there by Scott. And look at the dive, life on the line. Ten-point game now, 30 seconds left in the half. And Tevin Coleman. Ooh, vintage. <sighs> will work his way to the 44, and he'll use his second timeout. One remaining for that man right there. So Scott just running the ball right now. Not much time, but we're going to have to see if he can get something going through the air right now. He's got the flood going on this side of the field, so he got a streak and a corner route. Still has a timeout to use. Rodgers under pressure. Yeah, throwing on the run well under pressure. Uh, that's when you're going to see an accurate pass is the most often in Madden. The, the key to make sure your quarterback is accurate is you want to have your feet set, clean pocket, not under pressure, and then let it rip. Complete opposite right there for Aaron Rodgers. Most likely why you saw him sail it inaccurately. Who's going to face I'm Wild in the finals? It's a 10-point lead for a Rosie. And once again, able to get to the quarterback. The fourth sack today for a Rosie. That's a big sack. Scarp's not even worrying about using that last time out. 
This might just take him into the second half. That was a huge sack by Arosi. And that's how the half will end. 17 to 7. Arosi with the lead here in semifinal number two. Got a lot more coming up, including the finals. Of course, the Jags and the Seahawks kick off at 4.30. We'll be right back. K or FIFA? Oh, uh, I would say 2K. 2K, you get to use a lot of great players that you watch, you know, on TV like LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. Ooh, that's a tough one because I play both. But if I really got to choose, choose, I'm going to choose FIFA. I talk a good game, I really suck, but I'm still going to play FIFA. Uh, FIFA, I just started playing FIFA and I uh, never really got into 2K, so big FIFA fan and uh, NHL fan. That's a hard one because I, pl I play both. Very heavy. Uh, I would say 2K. I mean, recent, in the recent years, I haven't played that much FIFA, so 2K, 2K is killing it with the, my career. Oh, by far FIFA. I mean, the, the gameplay with FIFA is unbelievable. But I'm a, I'm bigger. I'm a more of a soccer fan than a basketball fan, so that probably has a lot to do with it. 2K. Um, the reason being is because you get to play with some of the best players. You know, as far as uh, LeBron James, you know, um, Kyrie Irving, and, and those type of guys. 2K. I'm just better at 2K. I like basketball and FIFA's fun though. I wouldn't say either 2K or FIFA because I'm, I'm more of a Madden guy myself. If I'm not playing Madden, I'm going to call a dude. Game going down on the field here in Jacksonville. It's the Seahawks and the Jags getting ready for a 430 kick. We got a 10-point game here in semifinal number two. Let's take a look at the first half highlights between a Rosey and Scarpness. All got going in the second quarter, RG. Yeah, and right here you see Todd Gurley getting all the momentum for a Rosie. That was what was gonna set him up for a touchdown where he punches it in, makes it two possessions. Here's the touchdown, two possession ball game. You thought he was in complete control here, Scott. Yeah, you thought you might run away with it. But then Tevin Coleman got to the outside and all of a sudden it was a three point game. Look at Scott kind of keeping his cool nose. He needs to get back in the game, but this is where a Rosie just turned the swag on right there. Spin, miss tackle, get to the numbers, dive into the end zone, make it two possessions. Look at the reaction. That's a man that wants to represent the Jacksonville Jaguars right there, Scott. Absolutely. Scott Cole along with RG and RG. We've had some fun here today. we got a good crew out here. Folks trying to get out of the wind a little bit. It's a little little chilly in Jacksonville. I the said before, we look like we're, we're doing the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade here. Let's take a look at the scouting report. How's it going in the first half? So, so far, so good. Scottness has stopped the run a few times, held the Rosie to... Uh, he, Scottness has played some good red zone defense, led up that big touchdown. Uh, he's given up two touchdowns. That's why he finds himself down two possessions. But a Rosie having some trouble stopping the run. We saw Tevin Coleman was the spark in Scarp's offense. So, if you're a Rosie, you're going to need to tighten up, get on, keen in on Tevin Coleman, and not let him get wild in that open field. Here comes the second half of semifinal number two. Who's going to face I'm Wild, the man from New Orleans, Louisiana. Of course, we got a man from Louisiana coming up here to join us in the booth in the finals, Josh Scobie, who played at Louisiana Tech. Jacksonville Jaguars legend. I think he's going to come out here, give some stuff away to the fans in the yeah. crowd. I hope my dude Axeman gets something because he's been out here turning up all day. First and ten a lot of fun. for Rosie. He's got a two-possession lead. We could put him in a hurting here if he's able to go down here and score a touchdown. I like that. You're seeing that a lot more in competitive Madden where you throw this underneath drag route and then immediately spin the opposite way of your momentum. Helps you pick up some extra rack. Good stick work by a Rosie. 
And he's doing a good job of just airing this ball out and completing passes. At 9 of 10 with Robert Griffin the third. There's a nice stiff arm by Shazier. It's going to bring up a second and four. He's in plus territory at the 47. Expect him to just continue to air this ball out, which is interesting seeing how he has Todd Gurley. You'd expect you want to get Gurley involved more, but when the passing game's working like this, no need. Ball now to the 42. That's going to move the chains for a Rosie. And a, a Rosie, he, he, he practices with some goons. He's practicing with, in the Ocean Gang crew. He's got Spoto, who qualified for the Madden Challenge. He's got his boy OGO Bob, who's in the Texans Club Championship as well. So that Ocean Gang crew's got some pretty good Madden players in it this year. They call it labbing. That's when those folks get together and sort of an iron sharps iron. They share their they share their secrets. They share the playbooks. That's the equivalent of practicing. That's how you get better. You Keep get go- better by playing the best. Let's go into the lab and see what we come up with. Second and ten. Now, now, who did you lab with? It was was Chow, Justin Chow. Was he your lab partner? Or? Yeah, yeah. I had Chow, I had Young Nephew, I had Corey Top, one great user, Mr. Magic City. I had some, some good. And those are friends now. The cool thing about the Madden community is these guys that you lab with, and you know, it starts off as just playing Madden together. They become lifelong yep. friends that you meet and you keep in. I still keep in contact with those guys all the time. So. One of the beautiful things about the Madden community is you, you make some real-life friendships off of this game. Want to get involved on social media, hashtag Jaguars Club Championship. Especially those that are in attendance, we'd love to know what you think. Give us a few. Get the snaps. You on Snapchat, RG? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I think you're still on MySpace, I, right? I, I barely made it on Twitter. Check RG out on Friendster. Good run by Gurley. Gurley will work his way to the 21 just outside the red zone. It'll be second in inches for a Rosie. Madden Bible, another good follow on Twitter. Boys, S. Gibbs and yeah. Z. Farles. I, I almost thought that Farles was going to have to take my place. It took me 20 hours to get from Baltimore to here, and that was via a plane. We, we don't know how to handle snow in the south, RG. We just, we just don't know how to do it. It snows and everyone loses their minds. <laughs> well, the good news here for Arosi is he has taken plenty of this clock away, letting that game clock wind down. He had the chew clock feature on right there. He's up two possessions. Keeping the chains moving. Arosi just playing quite flawlessly right now. RG3 rolling out. And he'll just throw this away. Live to fight another down, second and 10 from the 19. Really got to hold him to three here. Yeah, this is big defense for Scott. We talked about that red zone defense being the key to the game for him. This is a great example of that right now. You do not want to let a Rosie get in for a touchdown right now. Griffin. Big read. To Shazier. Good hit. We'll make it to the seven yard line. And you see that, you see that chew clock right there. What that does is you press the LB at the play call screen, and it just makes sure that when you come out of the huddle, the game, the play clock's only at 10 seconds. Yep. Quick way to kill clock, so we don't need to just sit there at the line of scrimmage for 30 seconds. But you see him, he's just letting that play clock tick and tick and tick, and that is the right thing to do if you're a Rosie, especially on first down. First and goal from the seven. And RG3 will hand it out to TG2. And he'll work his way to the three-yard line. So at least need to run two plays right here to get this to the fourth quarter. That's the good news here for Scarp. The bad news is it is going to be hard to hold the door against a Rosie's offense right now because he has just looked phenomenal. He's passing the ball. He's getting Gurley involved when he needs to. Gurley a power back, kind of like Leonard Fournette here in Jacksonville. Yeah, get that linebacker back in the box. Tough guy to bring down on first hit. Spins his way to the one-yard line. And this will take us to the fourth quarter here in semifinal number two. Live from Duval. One of the notes I like that I got here on a Rosie is he didn't play the draft champions ladder this year. He didn't really uh, 
go all in for the Madden Classic. He said the event that he was focused the most on in the MCS Championship was this Jaguars Club Championship. He put all his eggs in this basket. This was the main goal he wanted to accomplish. This is what he put his mind to, and so far it's paying off for him. Hands it off to Curley, and he will just bulldoze his way into the end zone. And that's the last thing Scarpness wanted to see. It's going to be a three-possession game with 4.59 left in the fourth. If you're Scott, you need to get down here and you need to go put a touchdown on the board or at least a field goal, but you got to do it in a hurry. You can't take your time. There needs to be a real sense of urgency right now. And hopefully, if you're Scott, a Rosie is playing a more of a safe defense that lets you pick it apart. It'll be interesting to see. Does a Rosie back him off or is he still going to send the goons? Kicks it deep. He took up the entire third quarter, 13 plays, and he caps it off with Gurley. Yeah, and that's why you get yourself a Todd Gurley. He gets blown up in the backfield, but he will fight for your cash, walks into the end zone. And I'm loving a Rosie's reaction yeah, shots. He's, he's failing it. it. I don't know what he's listening to there. Maybe a little Taylor Swift, some Bieber. I, 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 got, I actually asked him what's in the <laughs> iPod. He says he likes rap a lot. A true story is he was listening to Migos during online elimination. He fumbled, went on tilt. And then he's a Christian. He went into his Christian music for oh, yeah. a little All more, right. you know, settle, calming atmosphere. And he said he put up 30 unanswered after that. So, you know, a little, little Christian music, a little rap. Interesting mix right there. But he, he's got it going on. I tell you what, Scarpness is going to need a little magic here. Maybe even a miracle with 4.32 to go. Both these guys, local Madden players. Scarpness. About five minutes away from the stadium, a Rosie, about 20, 25 minutes. And once again, Scarpness just does not have time in the pocket. And that's Yannick, Jaguars defense ahead, making yep. plays right there. And, so. and sometimes you get worried, you know, because you're, you're fans, you're a fan of the team, you want to put them on your team. Sometimes that's not a great decision, but it's been a big No, with big Yannick impact. and A.J. Bouye, these are, yeah. these are good items. These are good players to have on the field, and they're balling out for a Rosie. Fourth and ten. Rodgers, they pick up the blitz, but couldn't get the secondary push, and so nice that he did it twice. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Rosie looks like a force to be messed with. This 21-year-old from Jacksonville, Florida, is he putting on some work? And he's got school finals coming up next week. He's a busy guy, you know? Nice quick pick up there to the 14. And a, a Rosie's been locked in. We, we, we got ourselves a good final coming up. Yeah, we were giving Scarp, you know, all this homage for, you know, going to school, working for qualifying here. I mean, for a Rosie, you know, going to school at Villanova, you got your finals coming up. I mean, there's a lot to squeeze in right there. You got to grind the ladders. He said he normally goes about five or six Jags games a year. This will be his first one this afternoon. Will he be going as the Jags champion? We're going to find that out here about three minutes and 20 minutes, uh, twenty seconds from now. Yeah, and he is ex 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 excited. What a yeah. game to go to if you're going to come to a game this year. This Jaguars versus Seahawks, this is going to be insane. Biggest game of the season. And you just can't say enough about the atmosphere here. You can really feel that these fans know something special is oh, going yeah. on. It's been a while. We got, we'll, we'll talk about that with Josh Scobie during the final. He was here with all that magic back in 98. You had Brunel, Fred Taylor, toting the rock. And there's a loss of three, third and goal. That'll take us to the two minute warning. Unless Scarpness wants to use a timeout and he won't. So two minutes to go in this one. It's a three possession game, RG. Yeah, and Scarp's gotta hold his head up. I mean, this is his first year yeah. He tried to start competing in Madden. In his first year, he set a goal to make this Jaguars Club event. He made it here. You're making progress, and that's what counts. And once you learn how to play competitive Madden, that's not a skill that just goes away. You saw it. It's something you can pick up as long as you put the time into it. Sal, a great example of that. Took a few years off, made it back here to a live event. So, Got some folks hanging out on the practice field behind us. It looks fun back there. They got like a bouncy house, a couple of mini games. See some kids running the 40. Having a good time back there. 
Janikowski to make it a 20-point game. As it looks like a Rosie might run away with this one. Is this the superstition? Run it down to three and kick it through? Well, you've seen the kick get blocked yep. in that situation as well. So, But, yeah, it's superstitious. Time. Up and through. And it's now 27-7 to seven in favor of a Rosie. One thing you got to call out is both these players doing a great job. All, all the players so far are doing a great job of just keeping their emotions in check. One thing that's a huge skill in Madden is keeping those emotions under control. Look at this atmosphere. See the palm trees, folks filing in, getting ready for the game. The local radio stations have pulled in. I can smell some of that tailgating yeah, from all I the know, way right? over here. Yeah. You think we could get a burger or something after this? And you thought we'd go a whole tournament without talking about food. Not going to happen. Well, the smells are starting to pick yeah, up. Sure. <laughs> They're pre-gaming. And you were talking about ribs last game. But I talk about ribs every game. That's like that's not even food. That's just like <laughs> an everyday way of life. It's part of the culture. <laughs> ribs are my religion. You missed some fantastic barbecue yesterday. Oh, so you're going to rub it in. So I was in the airport for 20 hours. I'm sorry. Tell me about the barbecue I missed. What was it called? Some, something pig right down the street. It was fantastic. They had this mustard-based sauce, this mustard barbecue sauce, the bearded pig it the was called. The bearded pig. It was yep. the real deal. The mustard sauce was fantastic. Sweet barbecue, hot barbecue sauce. Good variety. You know one of those places where they put all the selections yeah, on the yeah, table. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was good stuff. Under 90 seconds to go. The finals is coming up. We don't have too long to go before kickoff here in Jacksonville between the Seahawks and the Jags. You kind of feel for Scarpness here, a guy that lives less than five miles from the stadium. Big Jags fan. He's an even kill guy. He says he likes to keep himself busy, likes to keep himself motivated, hence why he could go to school, work, and play Madden. Stays, got a normal routine at the gym. He's a renaissance man. He's a beast. Unfortunately, he just ran into a... Had a tough time throwing the football. You know, a lot of pressure, didn't have the... You know, nothing really developed downfield. And, and a Rosie told us, he said, I just need to be able to stop the run because I'm confident in my pass defense. And we saw why. That, that pressure was coming. Well, we're going to see two amazing defenses in the finals. Lurk. It's an interception. Use a lurk. A little basket catch over the shoulder for Sazier. And that should do it. Look at it again, RG. And a user lurk. As you see how he's controlling Shazier, the entirety of the play then goes there and makes the interception. That's how you get a user lurk. That's how you show some stick work. That's how you get it done on defense. He's going to take a knee. Victory formation for a Rosie. So no matter what, the representative of these Jacksonville Jaguars is going to be a beast. You're either going to have a Rosie or i um Wild representing your club down there in the Orlando Championship. Yeah, I'm Wild, top 25 player overall. He made it to the Final Four in Madden 16. So this is a guy that's he's not a Johnny come lately. He's been doing this for a while. And the thing I love about these tournaments in the club championship is you take a guy like a Rosie who's relatively unknown in the community, has not made a name for himself yet, but guarantee you now his name is going to ring bells amongst the Madden community. It's going to ring bells amongst Jaguars fans, and he has a chance to do something special here today in Jacksonville. Let's take a look at the second half highlights in this one as it was all a Rosie there in the second half and some nice...